I hate intros. There will be no intro to this video. The Russo Gambit occurs after f5 in this position. The official engine approved way of refuting this gambit is by playing d4 here, after which things get pretty complicated. But the lines I'm about to show you are much simpler and easier to understand, and are absolutely filled with tricks and traps that will get us a winning position almost every time. Here we are going to give black exactly what they want by taking this f pawn. Now, black's panties are definitely starting to get wet right now, because the top move here, pushing the pawn to e4, I mean just look how well that scores for black, 61% of the time, black is winning there. So after black pushes their pawn to e4, most white players are moving their knight back to g1 and absolutely getting decimated. However, there is a very legitimate move in this situation that not many people are finding. It's this move knight to d4, sacrificing this knight entirely. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the now this is an extremely strong sacrifice, because if black takes our knight here, he's going to end up in a dead lost position. Black should play something like knight f6 here, and trust me, I have you there too. I have a secret line in that position that I will show you later in the video, but for now, I just have to show you what happens after black takes this knight. We respond with queen h5 check, and in this position black has to play g6. If he tries to run his king away, we can check on f7, bring his king to d6, check on d5, and when the king goes back to e7, we take this knight. Now, every move in this position is just terrible. The top played move, knight f6, just gets mated in one move. The second most popular move here, d5, also loses spectacularly after queen e5 check. Um, if the king moves to d7, it's mate in one. And if the king moves to f7, they simply lose the queen. There's nowhere for this king to run. The only move black has to even try to hold on here is the move king e8, which you can see has been played a whopping 2% of the time here. And after this, I mean black is still just completely positionally lost. Nobody has yet found this move d3, which holds on to a massive advantage for white, plus 5. And if black were to do something like take, we can just castle, and we have a lot of threats. I'm not going to cover this position since it's never been played before, but just know you're winning. So that brings us back to this moment after queen h5 check. The only move black has here to try to hold on is g6, after which we just take with our pawn, and there's a few options for black. First I'll cover a couple of the stupid moves here. If black just takes this pawn, hanging his rook entirely, we don't even want to take the rook. We want to take this pawn, and have the same little pattern as before, where we walk the king down to the middle of the board, push him back up, take this knight, now we're attacking this rook, and there's pretty much nothing they can do. And again, after the top played move, knight f6, it's another mate in one. Another frankly retarded move in this situation is knight takes c2. Um, this does make a tiny threat on us, but after king d1, they're simply totally lost. If they were to take our rook, it's going to be mate in two after this and this. And if they were to try the top played move here, um, knight f6, it's another mate in two after bishop f7 and then queen e5. So now that we know why this and this are absolutely terrible moves, why don't we check out the top played move here, knight f6. And this also loses terribly after this big brain move, g7. Completely sacrificing our queen on h5, but making a new one and taking a rook at the same time. I'll briefly go over a couple of the more popular moves in this position. Um, a lot of people will try to get some material back by taking on c2 and then taking our rook, but in this case we can take on h7 here, which is the engine's recommendation. But much easier and much simpler I find is just queen e5 check, winning this knight on the next move. And after king d8, now we play a very sneaky move, d3. A lot of people are not seeing our threat here and uh, taking this pawn, but even if they do see our threat and play something like bishop g7, now we have rook e1 and the game is just over. The engine's top move here is queen f6, after which we just take this pawn on h7. Now we're threatening to win this knight with check. Um, and even in this position, the most played move is knight takes c2, and then knight takes a1. And this just straight up hangs this knight again. After the king moves to d8, we again have this move d3. We're going to be picking this knight up, we're up material, and black is getting destroyed. If black were again to find the top engine move here, knight f4, it does score well for black, but after queen takes e4, we're simply up 5 points of material here. There's really nothing they can do. Even if they decide to trade queens off with us, we can take this queen off the board, play d3, threaten this knight, and like I said, we're up so much material, it doesn't matter if they take something, we can just move our king out of the way, 
and we're totally winning. At this point, we've covered the top played move here, knight takes c2. We've also covered the engine's recommendation, queen f6. Another tricky move here is knight f6. You'll notice this does indeed trap the queen in this corner, but if you just listen to the engine and do what it says, you're going to be perfectly fine here. Knight c6, and most people again are taking on c2, and then taking on a1. This leads to an immediate rook e1, and if black were to do nothing here, we just take this pawn off the board with our knight, and it's mate in 11. Most people are finding this move d5 here, but in this case we just snag that pawn off the board, and now black is completely falling apart. Even after something like bishop g4, we block with f3, and they can't even take with the pawn, they're pinned to the king. Black is simply dead lost here. Going back to this position, after black accepts our knight sacrifice on d4, we play queen h5, black plays g6, and we take the pawn on g6. The engine's top recommended move here is only played 4% of the time, but it is queen f6. After queen f6, we play g7 check, and when the king moves to d8, we simply take the rook in the corner and promote to a queen. Black takes our queen, and here we just want a castle. In this position, we are simply up 3 points of material and should have a 1 game. There's two main candidate moves black should play here, either knight f6 or knight takes c2. First, I will cover knight f6, since it's much simpler. Um, black has not yet taken our pawn on c2 here, so we can just bring our queen back to d1 to protect against that. And black has a little bit of compensation here, but we are simply up three points of material, and there's not a whole lot black can really do here. Um, we are going to play d6, knight c6, rook e1, and if this queen and this bishop ever try to team up on the king, just make sure we play g3, and our position should be perfectly solid. Now we will cover what happens after knight takes c2. In this case, we're just going to play d3, and black has a few choices here. If black tries to take his material back immediately by taking on a1, this sets off a very long forcing line that leaves us with a winning position at the end. It will go something like this. Bishop takes g8, queen takes g8. Bishop g5 check, bishop blocks, takes, takes, knight c3, knight c2 to avoid losing material, queen c5 check, and now black has a couple moves. If black tries to move his king to the back rank anywhere, either to e8 or d8, we just play knight d5 and we're threatening two different checkmates at once, things are pretty bad. Moving the king forward here is not advisable either, so the engine recommends d6, after which we take on c7, bishop blocks, and then knight takes e4. Going back to this position, knight takes a1 is not advisable. The only two moves that have been played in this position are bishop e7 and e takes d3. If e takes d3, we start with bishop g5 check. Black can block with either the knight or the bishop, but it doesn't really matter, they both transpose into the same line. After this, queen f7, black needs to block with the knight, and then here, we simply get our knight into the game with knight c3. If black were to do something like take this rook immediately, we have a beautiful mate in 7, after rook e1, queen e8, and then queen takes f6. Fucking nasty. If bishop takes, bishop takes, queen blocks, bishop takes, king moves, bishop g5, king over here, and then this absolutely disgusting Bowden's mate. And if black were to try anything else here, such as d6, we have a very similar series of events. After rook e1, knight takes, knight takes, queen f8, and then bam, rook takes e7. After queen takes, we take this knight, pinning the queen to the king, and black is totally done. And lastly, bishop e7. This prevents any bishop g5 shenanigans, so we should take on e4 here. Black should take his material back, and after this, I simply recommend just playing queen e2. This prevents this knight from ever getting back into the game, and we are simply going to have a massive lead in development and a crushing attack on black. At this point in the video, we have covered all of the destruction that happens after knight takes d4. If black knows what they're doing here though, they should play knight f6, and you can see here these stats are not very promising for white. Even though the engine is reading all zeros here, the general consensus on the internet is that black has a borderline winning position. However, like I said earlier in the video, I have a secret line here that nobody else on YouTube has yet explored. And that line is actually the only line going forward that actually has winning stats for white. It starts with us taking this knight on c6, and black really should capture back with the b-pawn here. That's kind of the entire point of this opening, so that black can build a massive center. First, I will show you what happens if black takes with the d-pawn. I would suggest starting with castling here. Most people are taking this pawn on f5, and then we want to follow up with the move d3. 
if black takes immediately. This gives us a slight advantage after the move of rook e1 check. Black should block with this bishop, and then we play queen f3. Black now needs to do something about this hanging bishop. So if you play something like bishop g6 or queen d7, um, we can simply take this pawn on d3, and we have a great position. Black can even mess up here by castling, and in this case we can simply win two pieces for a rook, and, you know, have a much better position. Black can also play something like bishop g4 here. Um, in this case, we're just going to try to trade things off again by taking this pawn on d3. Black probably should take this, and once we take back, you know, we have a great position. We're castled, we have better development than black, and black actually can't even immediately castle without losing a piece. But I hear you. You've been sitting there screaming at me saying, well, what happens if black takes on c2? Doesn't he just win a pawn in that position? Well, first of all, absolutely not, because look at that evaluation. Now we take this bishop on f5, and after black takes our knight, we want to take back with the rook. And the reason this evaluation is so good for white is because black is just pretty much going to be losing a queen in all of these lines. Um, for example, in the game that was actually played, black played queen d6. White can win a tempo on the queen with bishop f4. And in the game, black played queen b4. Here, we can actually just play queen e6. And now, there's really nothing black can do. After rook f8, um, we can play a3. Black can try to hold on for one more move, but after b4, there's just no holding on to this bishop here, and he's going to be losing a queen or getting mated. Even if black were to try to listen to the engine from here by playing their queen back to d1, it's simply trapped after rook bd1. Black has to take this rook if he wants to survive. If they were to try to hold on to the game by playing queen c8, we can simply win with the mate in 7 after rook takes bishop, king takes, queen c5 check, king e8, and then rook e1. So going back to this position, after we take the queen on b1, um, in the game black played queen d6, the engine recommends rook f8 here, and in this case we're just going to play bishop g5. Since this position's never been played, we're just going to focus on all of the engine moves. Um, the absolute best black can do here is play queen d6, after which we play rook bd1. Black should probably block our attack on this queen with his knight here, attacking our queen. But in this case, we can simply take this bishop on e7. I'm going to stop the analysis here. See if you can figure out why exactly white is totally crushing here. Alright, we're going back a good ways. We just discovered everything that happens after black takes our pawn on d3. Um, if black refuses to take this pawn and just play something like bishop d6 or bishop c5 here, we can just simply play knight c3, and you can see we have a very healthy advantage here. If black decides to take our pawn now, we can hit him with a rookie one, and then most people are moving this king out of the way and never being able to castle again. Even if they hit you with something like bishop e7, we can play queen f3, and we have a lot of the same kind of tactics we saw in the last game. And if black again refuses to take our pawn on d3 and play something like queen d7 here, uh, we can now take this pawn off the board. Um, they will trade queens with us, we take back, and now you can even see the top played move here, knight takes e4, is actually totally losing. Just take the knight, bishop goes here, rook e1, and we win. Alright, it's now time for the moment of truth. We just discovered why white has a much easier time playing the game after d takes c3 than black does. Um, but what everyone is recommending here is b takes c3, because after that move, black is actually winning 61% of the time. Totally crushing it. White is having a very hard time figuring out how to actually deal with the massive center that black is building. But, I mean, here we go, I'm just going to show it to you. After b takes c3, only played 2% of the time in this situation, we have the move bishop e2. Now I hear you, bishop e2, did you really just waste my fucking time building up to a retreating move? Well, hopefully not, my friend. If you don't see the idea I have yet, uh, I don't blame you because this is not an idea that's common at all. I actually haven't seen it played out in any other opening. Black should absolutely play d5 in this position, and then we hit them with bishop h5 check. Did you see that coming? Uh, if you said you did, I, I don't believe you. this king is never going to be able to castle. And believe it or not, the engine's top recommended move here is actually g6. This just seems like a terrible, terrible idea. You're giving away another pawn, all your kingside safety, and you're still never going to be able to castle. See, I told you bishop e2 was a good move. I mean, if, if you know what you're doing here with white and black has never seen this before, I, I don't understand how you don't come out of this game with a win. The only way black can even hope to hang on to a tiny, tiny advantage here is to play the perfect engine line for like 10 moves in a row, and that's just never gonna fucking happen. Just wait till you see these fucking moves. 
here, black has to play king e7. Uh, if he plays king d7, you can see it's already better for us. So king e7, we play d3, and then black has to play bishop h6. Uh, okay, so knight c3, and then queen g8. All right, uh, so we take this bishop on h6, black takes with the rook, and then we play bishop takes e4. If black takes with the pawn here, he gives his advantage away, so they would need to take with the knight. We take back with the pawn, queen takes g2, king d2, and then rook f6. Here we would reply with rook g1, black would take on f2, we gotta play king c1, and then black needs to take on c2. We take with the queen, black takes our rook, queen d1, and at the end of all that, a uh, good fucking job, you want a pawn. I'm not going to cover any of the lines we just saw in that position because that is just some ridiculous Alpha Zero engine gameplay. And all for what? A .1 engine advantage? Really? What I will show you is some lines that a human might actually play and how you can get a winning advantage every single time. Now earlier I mentioned that king d7 here gives us an advantage right away. This is because after bishop f5, the king moves, and then we just snag this bishop off the board. Black takes back with the queen. We play d3, and now there's some options. In one of the two games that was actually played from this position, black played rook g8 here, and you can see how just a simple move like that immediately gives the game away. All we really need to do from here is break down black's center a little bit, trade a couple pieces off, um, especially the queens. If they get traded, it should be an easy win for us. And get our king safe. A at the end of that, we're simply up two pawns, and there's really not a whole lot black should be able to do. Um, for example, we would just take this e-pawn here. Black would want to take on g2, and then queen f3. Queen f3, black needs to save this rook somehow. If he presents a queen trade, we take it, and we're happy. So rook g4, he takes d5, and I mean, what else is there to do? We just develop our pieces, castle our king, and and we're, we're simply winning. That That's it. So going back to this position, you can see why any slow move that doesn't immediately keep up the initiative for black uh, pretty much just hands us the game since we're already up two pawns. The best move black has here is queen f5, after which we just develop our pieces, knight c3, and you know, in the game black played knight g4, which I mean does make some threats on our king, which we just parry, and technically wins a pawn after knight takes h2. but. You know, in this case, we're just going to get our king out of any kind of this kind of danger by moving it to d1. And now black has a knight pinned to their rook. Uh, this just doesn't seem like any fun at all. I mean, black can continue making threats a little while longer with queen g6. Um, but here we can just play f3. And after bishop g7 to protect this rook, uh, we now just want to consolidate, bring our rook to e1. And, you know, after the very best lines, this is what we got. I'm really not scared of this position at all. So going back to this position, we just covered why king d7 uh, loses the advantage immediately. Black can try to hold on here also with king e7, but in this case we play d3. And unless black is playing that weird engine line from before, they're going to end up in a much worse position. For example, if black were to take on d3 here, um, I mean it's plus 4 immediately, we're up 2 pawns, black can't castle, his king's stuck in the middle, we win. Black has tried rook g8 in this position, after which we just play bishop h5. Black probably shouldn't take our bishop there, it makes things a lot worse for him. Um, black in the game played rook takes g2, and after e takes d4, uh, black would really have to play some weird moves like queen d6 here to hang on. If black were to take like he did in the game, I mean things are just much better for us. And if he plays you know, some other random bullshit, you can see we're just crushing it. Um, and even if they play like the top engine move here, queen d6, we just play queen f3, attacking this rook. The rook has to go back, most likely to g8. And then after e takes d5, we want our pawn back. I mean, this is the best line the engine gives for black. Uh, I mean, we trade the queens off, and, you know, we're absolutely perfectly fine. We're up two pawns. We're crushing it. All right, so we have covered all of the best lines that Stockfish gives for black after g6 here, sacrificing another pawn. Most people will not be playing that, though. Uh, you can see the majority of people who have gotten to this position have played king e7 and immediately that puts the ball back in our park. We're gonna play d3. First, I will cover the lines that the engine recommends here. Um, the engine says to take immediately, and after we castle, play bishop takes f5. If they were to take another pawn here, you can see it's just disastrous for black after queen e2. So, I assume people would be taking this pawn. We take on d3, 
and even at this early point in the game, I mean, I feel like we already have a very nice advantage for white going here. Um, Black's king is stuck in the middle while ours is safely castled, and we're not even down any material. The engine wants black to take this bishop here after we take back with the queen. And again, they can't go hunting for pawns here because we would just have bishop g5 winning the game. Um, so, you know, g6, we bring our queen back to d1, protecting our pawn. Now black should probably get his king out of the center of the board before he loses his queen. And, you know, we just put our pieces on good squares, and th there's nothing to worry about here. We got a great game. So, going back to this position, after black plays king e7 immediately, we play d3, and the engine wants them to take, but everyone who's gotten to this position has just taken this pawn on f5, after which we can just snag the pawn on e4, and black has a couple options. If black were to take with the pawn, we can simply castle here, and, you know, after the queen exchange, we just take back with the bishop to avoid losing it, and, you know, we have a great position here. Black has two isolated pawns, not to mention that some of them are doubled. His king is in the center of the board, and we are going to have very easy development going forward. If black were to take with the bishop here, similarly we castle. And, you know, here we still have queens in the board, and black's king is still stuck in the center. Once we can get our rooks to the middle, we should be absolutely killing it. Um, if black doesn't immediately take our bishop off the board, we can maybe pin it to the king and trade it off. Otherwise, we're just going to develop with moves like knight d2, try to trade this bishop off. Even if he doesn't let us trade that off, the f3 square is still a great place for our knight to sit, and we should have no problems from here. And lastly, if black captures with the knight here, which is probably the worst move, we can castle um, and have a great position, but the engine wants us to play knight d2. After something like knight f6, we can castle, g6, bring our bishop back to e2, develop our pieces like normal, and we're going to have a great game. Going back to our bishop h5 check, black also has king d7 in this position. And I argue here, we actually need to be a little bit careful, because in all of the other lines, black is capturing this pawn off the board. But here, since the pawn isn't gone, black is going to be able to play g6, open up some lines on our king side, and we may not want to castle into that. So the engine recommends playing bishop e2 here. If you can just remember this move after king d7, you shouldn't have really any problems in this line. Um, we're just going to play d3 put our pieces on good squares, uh, and most likely castle queenside. This should be a very easy position to play for white, and a very difficult position to play for black. And last but not least, we have knight takes bishop immediately. Here we'll capture back with the queen, and black needs to be really careful here. If they play the top played move here, king e7, uh, we can play d3, and we already have some threats. If black does nothing here, or captures on d3, we simply have queen g5 winning the game immediately, so black should play something like uh, queen e8. And after that, I find bishop g5 to be a good move. King d7 to hang on to the queen. Now we can trade the queens off. We have our bishop on a great square. We take on e4. And now look at this. Black has two sets of isolated pawns. We are going to put our knight to c3. We're going to cast along, get our rooks to the middle of the game. And we should have a totally winning endgame here. So going back to this position, king e7 is a dangerous move for black. Another really bad move is g6 immediately, because black just simply has zero compensation for the two pawns we now have. Um, so black should play king d7 here. And we are going to need to play this position a little bit different than the previous ones. Again, we should not castle kingside here, because black is going to open up files, and it's going to get dangerous. Um, and we also shouldn't play d3 immediately, because, you know, after e takes d3, we just don't have any threats. So in this position, the move we want to play is knight c3. Knight c3, uh, the engine wants black to develop something like this, um, so after any of these moves here, you can now see our idea is b3. b3, we're going to fee and capture this bishop, we're going to castle long, we shouldn't have any immediate troubles with this open b file since we played b3, and only after we get our rooks to the middle of the game should we play d3 and try to break this position wide open. Alright, so at this point in the video we have covered all of the fun that happens after the immediate e4 here. Um, however, black does not have to play e4 right now. They can also play knight f6 and d5. First, I will cover knight f6. And here, we can keep up the initiative by playing an immediate d4. Not a very common move in this position, um, but it does lead to a lot of traps for white. The most common move here is now playing e4, after which we jump our knight up to e5, and 91% of people are playing d5 here. That is because this knight is untouchable. You cannot take this knight because after d takes, this knight's going to have to move, and then queen h5 comes with devastating consequences. So d5, and we play bishop b5. We're immediately making threats here. 
Um, the engine recommended move here is a6, which only 1% of people are playing, because after knight takes c6, it looks like they're straight up just losing a rook. Technically, black can play queen d6 here, and after we move our bishop to a4, they can take our knight. And here, the move to maintain our advantage is going to be c4. c4, and we're just going to develop our pieces like this. If black takes on this file, we're, we're fine with that. They have triple isolated pawns, and we're going to win some of those back. We're going to castle kingside, and you'll, you'll see more of the ideas with c4 later. We shouldn't have too many problems in this line. So going back to this position, um, nobody here is really playing a6. What the vast majority of people are doing here is bishop d7, after which we can play c4. And what's funny is the top played move here, knight takes e5, just immediately loses the game. Black is simply going to end up a piece down here. Most people are taking this bishop on b5, and here we take the knight on f6. Black should accept his losses, take this pawn, and lose his bishop, but most people are playing bishop takes c4 here, after which we follow with queen h5 check, king d7, queen f7 check, black can't block with anything, so he moves to c8, and then f takes g7, wins us a piece, and a game. So we just discovered here why the most popular move loses spectacularly. Um, there's a lot of other moves black can play here, but they're all generally going to play similarly. Um, bishop b4 seems to be a pretty decent move here after which we play knight c3. Black generally castles, we castle, and now, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do wrong, but there's definitely a lot black can do wrong. Um, for example, knight takes e5 immediately, loses the game again. After bishop takes, we can take with the knight here, and now this knight's gonna have to retreat. Once it goes to e8, we take on d5, and I mean, just look at this. That's fucking ridiculous. So a move that scores better for black from here is taking the knight on c3 immediately, after which we take back, and, you know, black, again, in the only games that have happened here, has gone completely wrong. Um, knight takes e5, again, loses the game. Um, and the other played move here, bishop takes f5, also loses. After bishop a3, um, this rook is going to have to move here. And then we can take this knight and fork the rooks. We're going to be a material. We're already up a pawn, and we should win the game. So going back to this position, after we played d4, um, we just covered everything that happens after e4. Another move black likes to play here is d5, and here we play bishop b5. 77% um, of people from here are now playing e4 and transposing into the exact same line we just covered. So I'm not really going to get into that. Um, the thing is, there's not really a lot of other moves people are playing here. Um, bishop takes f5, we're now going to take on e5, and we actually have some fun lines here. After bishop d7, we no longer want to play c4 because after knight takes, pawn takes, we don't have this f-pawn anymore to help out with queen h5 check. Um, so what we should play is just knight c3. And you can see here a lot of people are now taking on e5 and losing again. In a different way though. After we take back, most people are taking our bishop here. We can take back with the knight. And after something like knight e4, which is what a lot of people are playing, if you see it, we have this move, queen takes d5. Absolutely disgusting. Like your mother. So that pretty much covers everything after knight f6 and d4. Um, the other move black is playing in this position is an immediate d5. You'll notice there are a lot of similarities between this line and the last one. We are going to play bishop b5, pinning this knight. And the top played move here is bishop takes f5, a mistake. Now we are going to take on e5. And black's idea might have been to play queen e7, pinning our knight to our king here. Um, however, now we simply solidify everything with d4. Black is already dead lost here, but if you follow the top played moves, um, black makes things even worse for themselves. Uh, the top played move is castles long, after which we take the knight on c6, pawn takes, and now we castle, getting our knight out of this pin. And you can see the top two moves here do absolutely nothing about this fork on c6, winning us an exchange and giving us a totally winning position with a wide open king that's easy to attack. Generally, we're going to want to play moves like queen e2 to try to get our queen over here. And if we can do that and black knows nothing about it, it's pretty much going to be checkmate. And even after the best moves here, it's going to be very difficult for black to even survive after moves like um, rook e1, trying to lift it to the third rank and deliver this checkmate. Alright, so going back to this position, after d5 and bishop b5, we just covered bishop takes f5. The second most played move here is e4, which also allows us to get our knight into e5. Um... The top played move here, bishop d7, completely loses the game for black after queen h5 check. If g6 here, it should be fairly self-explanatory, we've seen this before. We take the g-pawn, knight f6, and we push to g7, winning the rook and the game. And if king e7 here, 
Um, we first want to take this knight. It's a key defender in this situation. Taking with the b-pawn is definitely better than taking with the bishop. If they take with the bishop, queen f7, king d6, and then d4 completely ends the game. This cuts off black's last escape square, and now there are just a bunch of mating patterns here. Um, black has to cover this mate somehow, so if something like this or this. Um, now we have knight c4, checkmate in 3, after bishop f4. So going back to this position, after we take the knight, black should probably capture with the pawn here to prevent mates on this square. And now queen f7 is a great move, and you're still going to win a lot of games this way. But if, if you really want to be accurate here, you want to play the move b3. b3, and the following continuation is just going to leave you up a clean piece. First of all, if something like knight f6 here, um, bishop a3 is just going to be a mate in 2. So black needs to play something like queen e8, after which we hit him with bishop a3, king d8. Snatch the queen off the board. Black has to take back with the king here, otherwise he loses this bishop. So king takes, and now we can take the bishop anyways. Black takes, we take with check, and if he attacks our knight, we just get out of there, and we are simply up a clean piece. So we just covered the most popular move here, bishop d7. Um, you can see the engine's recommended move is queen h4, which has been played exactly 0% of the time, 8 times out of 7,500 games. Um, so I'm not even going to cover that move. Other moves in this position, such as knight f6 and bishop takes f5, do absolutely nothing about our threat to take this knight and then fork the king and the rook. Um, so the only other two logical moves here are queen f6 and queen d6. Queen d6 is a lot worse, so I'll just show you queen f6. After queen f6, we play queen h5 check. Black really needs to play g6 here. If something like king d8, I mean this simply loses a rook. And if something like queen e7... Um, we can play d4, solidifying our knight and threatening this. Things are not looking very good for black there. So g6 in this position actually leads to a very forcing line that gets us to a winning position. We take this g-pawn, black takes back. We cannot take the rook because it's defended, but we can take the g6 pawn. Black takes back with the queen. We take back with the knight, threatening this rook. Most people are playing rook h6 here. And now, if you notice, we're simply up two pawns in this position. So the engine just wants us to trade as many pieces as possible. First, we start with bishop takes c6, pawn takes, and now we can take the bishop on f8, king takes, and now we can play d3, attacking this rook, winning a tempo on it, and next we're going to capture on d4, we're going to get our knight out, we can castle either way we want, and we have a great game. And now, the last major line we'll be covering this video is if black plays the engine recommendation here, bishop d6. This prevents us from getting our knight to e5 at all, and it's generally a pretty good move. We still have an advantage, but black scores pretty well here. Um, the move to remember here is d4. d4. 90% um, of people are playing e4 here. The only other real option I see is taking here, where we take back with the knight. And again here, black actually needs to be pretty careful. The top played move here, bishop d7, actually gives us this queen h5 check in a great position. So going back to the main move here, um, after d4, black mostly plays e4. Now we can play knight e5, and most people here are taking with the bishop. Take it with the bishop, and now what we can do is throw in this bishop takes c6 check before we do anything else. Black takes back with the b pawn, now queen h5. And again, things are very, very tricky for black. Black should be playing g6 here, um, but you can see a lot of people here playing king f8 for some reason, which just simply gives us these two pawns on the fifth rank, which are going to be absolute beasts. Um, after black's main move here, knight e7, you can see white is winning 96% of the time, which is pretty nice. I'm not really going to go too deep into that position, um, but black here should play g6, after which we take the pawn. And now you can see most people here are playing knight f6, the wrong move. We just simply take our bishop back with check, and after queen e7, we can take the queen, and then take this h7 pawn. And here, we're simply up two pawns in a great position. The move that black should have found in... Um, this position here is the move bishop g7. Getting the bishop out of danger, not allowing us to push to g7 to give check and win the rook. Um, but here what we can do is just take the h7 pawn. Um, black plays king f8. And then even though our queen is hanging, we can still take this knight with check, get our material back. Black should take with the king here. Now we can play queen g6, pinning this bishop, not allowing it to take here. In one of the games that guy here, um, black played queen f8, which just simply hangs two pawns. And gives us a great position. In the other game, black played queen f6 here, which we can gladly just take off the board. Bishop takes, and then bishop e3, solidify everything. Black has a big center, but we have two extra pawns, and we are totally winning here. Alright, so that's my video. Let me know what you think. Like, comment.
comment, subscribe, go fuck yourself, all that shit. I'm gonna end the video with a lovely interaction between two random customers at a local Walmart. Please don't touch. Please don't talk to him. Don't touch him. He's a service dog. And you're distracting when you're talking to him. Sorry. Fuck you. Eat shit and die, bitch.